calling to order the Solano Community College District Governing Board meeting of December 16th, 2020. Would you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance and with uh, Zoom lags and other technical pieces, just go at your own pace. Don't try to match anybody else. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, 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 America the Republic America. for which it stands, it stands one, one nation, nation, one nation, indivisible, with, with, with liberty and justice. Liberty. We have a roll call. Trustee Chapman. Here. Trustee Honeychurch. Here. Trustee Cara. Here. Trustee Martin. Here. Trustee Thurston. Here. President Voice. Here. Trustee Young. Present. We have a quorum. The following edits and clarifications should be noted in the agenda. Agenda item 15H, Academic Affairs Policy 6041, uh, credit for prior learning and updated version of the policy has been provided uh, to the trustees and is available online. Item four, approval of the agenda. Um, Trustee Chapman, would you like to motion to approve the agenda? Yes, I move for the approval of the revised agenda. And uh, Mr. Honey Church, would you like to second that? Second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments on the agenda? Maybe we have a roll call. President Voice. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Cara. Aye. Trustee Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. Motion passes. Item five is comments from members of the public on closed session items. Um, the comments can be submitted electronically at uh, board.agenda.solano.edu. Um, Ms. Theron, do we have any uh, submitted comments for um, closed session items? No comments. All right. Um, with that, we'll uh, now uh, adjourn for closed session and we'll reconvene at seven o'clock. Reconvening the regular meeting. A report of action in closed session. There are no action items to report out from closed session. That brings us to item nine, comments from members of the public on open session items. Uh, Ms. Theron, are there any comments from members of the public on open session items? No comments. All right. Uh, since, well, yeah, since last time we've had some election results uh, approved. And so item 10 is to approve the election results from uh, certified election results from our uh, counties that we serve. And so um, I'll choose two who are not uh, in, in the election results. So um, Ms. Cara, would you like to motion to approve the election results? Uh, I move to approve the election results in agenda item 10. And Trustee Young, would you like to second that? I second the motion that's on the floor. Any questions or comments on item 10? All right, then maybe have a roll call vote. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. Trustee Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. President Voice. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Cara. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Um, that brings us to item 11, administering the oath of office uh, for new and returning uh, governing board members. Uh, Dr. Celia esposito Noy, our superintendent, serves as our, our board secretary as well. And so I'm going to hand it over to uh, Dr. esposito Noy to uh, manage the oaths here. Thank you very much, President Voice. Uh, this evening is the organizational meeting where we will administer the oath of office to uh, those trustees who recently won their seats in the recent election. And so we will begin um, based on the area. We have the Honorable Dennis Honeychurch, who will administer the oath of office to returning governing board member, Trustee Rosemary Thurston. So Trustee Honeychurch, if you have um, the language for the oath of office, and Trustee Thurston, 
Uh, if you would raise your right hand while Trustee Honeychurch administers the oath and then repeat after him. Yes. So Trustee Thurston, please repeat after me. I, Rosemary Thurston, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I, Rosemary Thurston, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. That or I take purpose, this obligation. The purpose of evasion. Okay, excuse me that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation of purpose of evade or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. And that, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations, you're sworn in. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, um, we will have Mr. Gary Sandy from the chair of the Yolo County Board of Supervisors who will administer the oath of office to returning governing board member Michael A. Martin. Mr. Sandy. Thank you. Trustee Martin, please raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. He's on mute. I'm you Michael are. A. Martin. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. <laughs> that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations, Trustee Martin. Thank you, Gary. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Congratulations, right. Trustee Martin. Next, we have Mr. Garth Lewis, Yolo County Superintendent of Schools, who will administer the oath of office to returning governing board member, Trustee Quinton R. Voice. Mr. Lewis? Yes, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. And I, before we start, just want to say congratulations to Trustee Voice uh, as a colleague of mine and just I really appreciate his work there in the district, uh, as well as his work uh, alongside me in our program at UC Davis. It's an honor to be here with all of you this evening. So here we go, trustee voice. If you can raise your right hand. And you'll repeat after me. I state your name. I Quentin our voice. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend that I will just support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. 
foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter, upon which I'm about to enter. Excellent. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, soon to be Dr. Lewis here. We're, we're in our educational doctor program together, and I really appreciate you uh, spending this moment with me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Thank you um, to all who participated, and um, congratulations to our trustees who won their election. And now I will turn the meeting back over to President Poise. Thank you, Dr. Celia Zudernoy. All right, so uh, this also brings the end of uh, my year of presidency. And so um, I'll, I will administer the nominations for board president and then hand it over. And uh, the new board president will um, handle the nominations for vice president and any other roles we might have here. So, um, so item 12, um, election of the governing board officers for the 2021 20, year, uh, president, vice president, and appointed secretary. I'll now open the nominations for board president. Are there any nominations? Yes, Mr. Martin. I'd like to nominate trustee Honey, Dennis Honey Church. Is there a second for the nomination? I'd second the nomination. Uh, it, it, it's been moved by trustee Martin and seconded by trustee Young to um, nominate uh, Dennis Honey Church as board president. Is there any discussions or questions? I move the nominations to be closed. All right. Um, uh, okay. I, 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 okay. Great. Uh, is there a second to nominate? I don't know if we need a motion for closing nominations. That's what I was <laughs> looking there. Do we need a motion to close nominations? Yes, we do. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Great. Uh, do we have a second to uh, close the nominations? I move we second. All right. It's been moved and seconded to close the nominations here. Um, yeah, because that would mean we need a vote on the closing of the nominations. I think. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, correct. All right, uh, then may we have a roll call vote to close the nominations? Trustee Cara. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. President Voice. Aye. Trustee Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Motion passes. I don't want to. I don't want to mess this up. We only have one nominee. <laughs> I'm assuming that this means it's still been moved and seconded for Trustee Honeychurch to assume the role as president. Um, do we need a roll call vote on this as well? As well? Yeah, you have to vote on it. Yep, yeah. uh, Dr. President, right? We uh, administer a roll call vote. Uh, yes, Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Honeychurch. Aye. President Voice. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. Trustee Cara. Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Honeychurch. Thank you so much. Congratulations. So uh, thanks for your confidence in me, my fellow trustees. And I'm not asking for a recount. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll do a peaceful transition here. I, I'll, I, won't, I won't contest. Maybe we changed our mind. <laughs> so now uh, the next item is uh, I'll take over and I'll, I'm asking that we now open the nominations for vice president. Are there nominations for vice president? Yes. Uh, trustee uh, Honey Church, I would like to nominate Trustee Chapman for vice president. I would like to second that. Uh, all right, are there any, any further nominations? Is there a motion to close the nominations? I move that we close the nomination on the said person. Second. Is there a second? Second. Is there moved and seconded? Uh, can you please call the roll? 
Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. President Voice. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Cara. Aye. Motion passes. So now we do we have a well we've had a motion to nominate Dr. Chapman for vice president. So can we call the roll on that? Yes. Trustee Cara. Aye. Trustee Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. President Voice. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Sarah. So next is the uh, nomination for appointment of a of secretary. Are there nominations for secretary? I nominate Dr. Noah as our secretary. I recognize Aye. it. Pardon me. Yes. So is there a second? Second. So approves many Thurston seconds. Uh, so in, are there any further nominations? If not, I'll close the nominations and maybe have a roll call on nominating Cecilia Espinito Noy as the secretary of the board. Trustee Cara. Aye. President Voice. I'm sorry. Aye. Trustee Voice. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. The next is uh, establishing the dates, times, and location of the governing board meetings. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the proposed locations, dates, and times? I move for approval. Thank you. As there I'll second, second that. Mary Thurston making the motion. Dr. Chapman, I'm recognizing yes. you. I second the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, please call the roll. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Cara. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next is item C. We're opening, or I am opening, the nominations for representative to the Solano County School Boards Association. Are there nominations? I would like to. Um, I would like to nominate um, Quentin Voice um, as our representative to the Solano County School Board Association. I'm, I'm honored for the nomination, but I uh, I, I reached out and and uh, found a trustee who is uh, willing and interested to take on uh, representing us for a year, and so. Uh, I'll decline that nomination and, and instead move for a uh, nominate Trustee Cara for uh, to, to represent us to the uh, Solano County School Boards Association. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Trustee Martin. The motion's made by Quentin Boyce. So now I'm going to I'm going to close. If there aren't any further nominations, I will close the nominations and ask that the roll be called for having Kareem Makara as a the board's representative to the Solano County School Boards Association. And thank you in advance for taking on this job. Trustee Cara. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Next item is item 13, the consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered by the board to be routine and will be enacted by the board in one motion. There is no discussion on these items prior to the time the board votes on the motion unless members of the board, staff or the public request specific items to be discussed 
and or removed. Time will be provided before the vote for clarification questions without removing item, an item from the agenda. So is I'm gonna call on Sarah Chapman, would you make the, mo are you willing to make the motion to approve the consent ag agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda. And uh, Karima Kara, Trustee Karima Kara, would you be willing to make a motion in a second? I'll second that motion. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Please call the roll. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Cara. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. The next item is item. There are no items removed from the consent agenda on item 14. We're on to item 15, which is nine consent agenda items, action items. The first of which is the collective bargaining agreement for the College Faculty Association. Do I, do I have a motion to approve? And I'm asking specifically, Mike Martin, do you have a motion to approve this item? I'll make the motion to approve. 15A. And uh, Trustee Thurston, would you be willing to second? Second. All right. Unless there's any any discussion on this item, any questions? If not, uh, please call the roll. Trustee Cara. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Motion passes. Well, thank you. And to all who participated in this, thank you very much for your work. Next item is uh, item 15B, which is a resolution to appoint the official representative to the school North Bay Schools Insurance Authority. Uh, I'm asking if Rosemary Thurston would be willing to make the motion to approve this item. I move for approval of item 15B. And uh, Trustee Voice, would you be willing to second? I'll second that motion. So are there any questions or discussion on this item? Clarification, do we need uh, the name of the individual that will uh, be representing in the motion? So if yeah. the Superintendent President could answer that question. You're muted, you're muted, Celia. Thank you. Okay. It's listed in the agenda item, um, but the designated representative is Salvatore Abate, our HR manager, and the alternate representative is Karen Mitchell, who's an HR generalist. Are there any further questions or discussion? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item is item 15C, which is amendment to extend the DOD OEA cascade grant agreement with the governor's office of planning and research. So uh, I'm calling on A. Marie Young. Do you have a motion to approve? Yes, I move to approve item 15C. So, and Sarah Chapman, would you be willing to second? I second the. Please, any questions or discussion by board members? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Cara. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Motion passes. All right, thank you. Item D, it's 15D, amendment to extend career catalyst sub agreement with the Foundation for California Community Colleges. So, A. Marie Young, would you be willing to make the motion to approve this item? I move that we approve item 15D. And uh, 
Trustee Chapman, would you be willing to second? I second. All right. Any discussion, questions? If not, uh, please call the roll. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. Motion passes. All right, thank you. That brings us to item E, which is the Governor's Office DOD OEA cadence grant to place student interns at DOD SBIR companies. Um, uh, Trustee Kara, would you be willing to move to approve this item? I'll move to approve item 15E. And Trustee Martin, would you be willing to second? Second. And there's any discussion or questions about this item? I would like to know uh, what, in education terms, what DOD SBIR are. And Mr. Chuck Eason is here to answer that question. Sure. Good evening, uh, President Honeychurch, some members of the board, and Superintendent President Celia's Noy. So, um, this is a new grant, actually. Uh, it's a third grant we have through the governor's office. The governor's office received a DOD Office of Economic Adjustment grant. And this grant will be placing student interns at Department of Defense. Uh, SPR stands for Small Business Innovation Research Companies. So these are companies that are doing R&D work for the Department of Defense. So our student interns will be assisting them with commercializing whatever their particular technology or innovation might be. And we'll have faculty uh, externs or mentors to guide the students through the process. So we're gonna have 20 colleges across the state uh, that will be participating. We'll do an RFA for that to uh, find 20 colleges to place interns at these DOD small business innovation research companies. All right, thanks for explaining that. That's one of the, well, to me at least, maddening things about education is they have all these acronyms that <laughs> DOD we also, we DOD. also have the legal business, uh, but in any event. So are there any other questions or comments? Yes, I have a question. Sure, Dr. Chapman. Good to see you. Um, Chuck, you come before us every year <laughs> and we renew contracts, but you know, we don't, we don't receive uh, an update or how, how, how does this work? Can you um, help me to understand, are you, uh, who receives yeah. the reports? I know we are your fiscal agent, but. Uh... Yeah, and the reports actually, um, so my position uh, for the last seven years, uh, you know, prior to this, I was the Small Business Development Center Director at Solon College for 11, 12 years. But for these last seven, I've been in the statewide role as the statewide director for business and entrepreneurship. So I'm working with all 116 in the community across, uh, colleges across the state. So this is a chancellor's office funded grant. So I do have a, my annual report that goes to the chancellor's office. And then there's also a annual report that goes to the legislature as well for what we're doing on this. Because the community college system has 10 different sectors. So each one of the sectors has a statewide director. So in my, in my case, I'm the statewide director for the business entrepreneurship sector, but we also have advanced manufacturing sector, advanced transportation, uh, life sciences, bioscience, uh, health, uh, ag and uh, energy. So we have all these different sectors and each one has a one statewide person. And then we have regional directors that work on a regional level. So the reporting right now goes to the chancellor's office and, and then to the governor, but I'd be happy to come in and then provide a report of any activities as well to you. Okay, so are many of our students involved with these grants with your programs? Some of the some of college has participated in the past in some of our grants. Um, this one grant, the Cascade Two grant, um, the Salon College was not one of the 10 colleges participating, but I'm hoping with this new Cadence grant, which is the item we just now approved, that Salon College would consider being one of the colleges to participate in that. So we'll be issuing an RFA here in the next few weeks for, uh, there will be 10 colleges for the business and entrepreneurship sector and then 10 colleges for the advanced manufacturing. Uh, sector participating in. So there's 20 different colleges that will be able to participate in this project. So I'd be happy to have Solano participate in that. And love to see that as well. So. Okay, so we're actually your fiscal agent. And so uh, you come before us, we approve uh, the language and everything. 
and that gives them you the green light to pass it on to the state and, and the chancellor. Uh, you said in the past, our students have not benefited from the grants, but you're hoping we will. Is there anything you can do to assist our students to get um, to, to get involved in these programs that you're administering and that we're the fiscal agent? Yeah, so they have participated in some of our grants in the past, so not all of them. We've had a few that we've done. Uh, and I'm working with, uh, for example, today, I was just passed on an opportunity to uh, Dr. Slayton, uh, uh, LaVon Slayton, who is one of the business faculty I work with. I'm working on a project with Citibank right now. Down in pilot, It's a pilot in LA, but they want to uh, expand that. We now have 30 colleges participating where we're going to have Citibank micro badges and then they, they would go on to do a capstone project as part of a class, and then they could become eligible for internship. So Levon is definitely interested in doing that uh, today. She just got back to me, so we're hoping to get Solano to participate in that particular project. So there's different opportunities that come up. So uh, you know, it's a matter of uh, you know whether some of the faculty have bandwidth to do this. I know with the Cascade grant, it was focused on cybersecurity. So we do have Kevin Anderson, who's got some expertise in that area, but. Uh, that particular one went to a lot of the colleges that had more advanced cybersecurity programs. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. If there's no other questions, uh, would the, the roll please be called? Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Oh, Trustee Martin. It's on mute. Oh, okay. Thank Sorry. You. Aye. Thank you. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Motion passes. I have another question of Chuck before he leaves. If I may. Sure. Well, we'll give you special permission. <laughs> Thank you. You're so kind. So kind. Uh, do we, been, does the college receive the administrative costs? Uh, I think it used to be like 15 or 20% of the grant. Do we get anything uh, for being your fiscal agent? Yeah, it varies. So the chancellor's office limits it to 4% indirect, which isn't a whole lot. But the grant you just approved for cadence, that one is the governor's office grant. We put in for 10% indirect of that. So it's a little bit higher. The chancellor's office is, for all their grants, have been pretty much limited to that 4%, which is not a whole lot, so. That's not. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Chapman. So the next item on the agenda is renewal of the Chancellor's Office Statewide Director of Business and Entrepreneurship Grant. Uh, Trustee Martin, would you be willing to move to approve this item? Motion to approve 15F. Trustee Thurston, would you be willing to second? Second. So it's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments on this item? If not, uh, please call the roll. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. Motion passed. All right, thank you. That leaves us or leads us on to item G, which is an amendment to extend the sub agreements between. Solano College and other participating colleges under Cascade Two grant. So, uh, Trustee Voice, do you have a motion to approve this item? Sure, I'll motion to approve item uh, 12G. 15. Oh, 15G. 15 15G. Oh, oh, 15G, correct, sorry. Thank you. And Trustee Young, are you willing to second? Yes, I second 15G. Thank you, are there any questions or comments? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Motion passed. Thank you. Next item is item 15H, which is Academic Affairs Policy 6041, Credit for Prior Learning. Uh, Trustee Young, do you have a motion to approve this item? I move for approval of item 15H. 
And uh, Dr. Chapman, are you willing to second? I second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? If not, yeah. please call the other one. Oh, yeah. certainly. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, this one, this one I think is really important to a lot of the uh, community that we serve, looking at having Air Force community and returning students. And so I just wanted to thank uh, those involved for um, taking the time to to build up our uh, credit for prior learning sort of pathways and, and how to do that. And so um, this one, I was really excited to see on the agenda. So so thank you. I'm assuming uh, Dr. Williams and, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Azuzidonoy, um, that's what I'm thinking. Right. Dr. Williams, yeah, thank you. And thank you. So uh, please call the roll. Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Cara. Aye. Motion passes. All right, thank you. Next item is item I-59, clinical experience agreement between Solano Community College District and I'm not sure how this is pronounced, but Les Petites Papillons, Vallejo, California. So uh, Trustee Cara, would you be willing to move to approve this item? Yes, um, I move to approve item 59. Thank you. And uh, Trustee Martin, would you second? Second. Any questions or uh, comments about the item? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Motion passes. Trustee Honey Church, you might be interested to know the Petit Papillon means little butterflies. So that's <laughs> well, I knew, the, uh, I knew that. the child care center. Thank you. The, the little butterflies. Okay. I think it was the Petit that threw me off. I've, I knew that Papillon was butterflies from seeing the movie of the same name. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a war zone. Well, maybe it is sometimes. Yeah. So well, let's move on. Uh, item J, 15J, is clinical experience agreement between Solano Community College District and the Village Child Care and Learning Place, Vallejo, California. So is there a motion approved by, uh, well, I'll call on Trustee Thurston. I move for approval of item 15J. And uh, Trustee Voice, would you second? Happily, I'll second that. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. Motion passes. All right, thank you. Next item is item K, 15K, request for approval of curriculum items as submitted by the curriculum committee. Uh, a subcommittee of the Academic Senate. So I'm going to call Amy Marie Young. Would you be willing to make the motion to approve this item? I move that we approve item 15K. And is there a second from uh, Trustee Chapman? I second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? If not, please call the roll. Trustee Cara? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. Trustee Voice? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item is item L, which is Student Services Strata Information Group. I'm calling on Trustee Chapman again. Uh, would you make the motion to approve this item? Yes, I move for the approval of 15L. And Trustee Kara, would you be willing to second? I'll, I'll second 15L. Thank you. Any questions or comments on this item? Hearing none, uh, please call the roll. Trustee Young? Aye. Trustee Thurston? Aye. President Honeychurch? Aye. Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Voice? 
Aye. Trustee Chapman? Aye. Trustee Cara? Aye. Motion passes. Motion is approved. Next item is 16A, which is Measure Q Quarterly Progress Report. Uh, update to the Governing Board. So. Uh, thank you, President. Okay. Thank Church. I'll go directly to Lucky Lofton. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, President Honey Church and members of the board. Congratulations to uh, all of you. Um, uh, this uh, quarterly report is um, our standard quarterly report. Um, you have the report in hand. There are some highlights that uh, discuss a number of projects. Um, we have uh, spent 54% of the bond to date, $189 million. Uh, during this last quarter, $867 thousand dollars were spent primarily on that building that's right behind me uh, on the library. Um, do you have any questions? Any questions by the board? Apparently you've been thorough enough. <laughs> Lucky Lofton, thank you. Item, we'll move on then to item B, which is a financial report for the first quarter 2021 by Rob Diamond. So can I just recognize Mr. Diamond all right. Thank you, President Honeychurch, and congratulations. Uh, congratulations to all the board members. I know we're going to have a great year in 2021. It can't be uh, worse. <clears throat> so I have two items on the agenda that seem somewhat similar, but are distinguished by time. So item 16B is the uh, CCFS 311Q quarterly report for the first quarter of the current fiscal year. This is a required filing that we provide the chancellor's office uh, every quarter, and of course we update the board. For this report, uh, I can summarize it simply by saying for the first three months of the year, we are on track, our expenses are within budget, running slightly below budget, uh, our reserves remain stable, uh, and uh, we're in a predictable and comfortable position at the end of the first quarter. This is just an information item, and I'm happy to take any questions you have about it. Sure, are there any questions of Rob Diamond? I don't have any question. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. President. Go ahead. Um, I don't have any questions. I just want to state that it was uh, very, I was happy. I was pleased to um, read the highlights of the report uh, to cut me that close to um, the projected and the actual. Um, I don't know which one I'm speaking of right now, but both of the reports are favorable. And so I just want to thank you for a great job you're doing with your oversight. You're here. So with that, any other questions? Mike Martin, did you have a question? I, I just wanna say that that was a very detailed report and uh, some of it was a little hard to follow. I understood most of it, but you have many, many lines here filled in. And some of them seem to repeat themselves in some cases, but uh, I got to the bottom line that we were in best, we were in great shape, so thank you. It's very detailed. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I was yes, just asking, um, is there any, um, you, you included in the report, but I just thought I would give you a chance to um, talk on, you know, the idea that we're being, the, the deferments uh, and the cash, and so our cash flow uh, status and, and how that's looking in terms of word from the state on, you know, if there's an end to deferment or if it were, you know, just sort of an update on that concept. That's a great question. As I made uh, my comment earlier, as of the end of the first quarter, we're in a stable and predictable position. Uh, unfortunately, the state budget for the current year uh, makes the first quarter and even the second quarter to appear like everything's fine. But the current budget means that of the 12 cash payments, 12 monthly cash payments we receive from the state, they are deferring the last five months of the year. So there will be a substantial cash impact in the last five months of the year. Uh, the current budget uh, had a trigger in it, a hope that the federal government would adopt some form of assistance for state and local governments. And if they did, some part of those deferrals would have been relieved. Uh, it does appear that, well, there's been no progress on that in Washington, uh, and it does appear that there won't be any in the near future. So any hope we had for some federal assistance, uh, for the time being at least, uh, it has to be pushed off to the future. So things are good now, but we will have our cash crunch uh, in the second uh, half of the year. 
Thank you. Uh, you, you also asked about, uh, you know, how the budget's looking. You may have seen in the news that the legislative analyst's office was saying that next year looks like a really good year for community colleges. To put that in context, they mean a really good year compared to the current year. <laughs> not great compared to the way it used to be. And in fact, in the rosiest of predictions, they say it might be good enough that they can pay us back the five months of cash that they're withholding from us this year and maybe provide us a 1% COLA next year. But that requires on a lot of rosy assumptions, including that the legislature would continue to give us a supplemental support payment, which they may be less inclined to do if we have a greater revenue stream next year. So when you hear rosy projections in the news, it, rosy means it's better than this year. It doesn't mean it's really great next year. Thank you. Thank you for that update. Any other questions? If not, thank you for your report. And I think you're on next as well for the annual financial report. Yes, thank you. Uh, the annual financial report is wrapping up last year. Uh, so it, I just covered the first quarter of the current year. Every year we do an annual report to the chancellor's office. Uh, and this, of course, is also included in our annual audit, which the auditors are reviewing now. It's 49 pages long. Uh, you may have looked at it. Trustee Martin expressed that there appears to be repetition in there, and he observed correctly. That is true. So I thought I would just hit some of the highlights uh, from those 49 pages. So there are just, I think, eight data points I wanted to point out. One is on page four, uh, the law requires that we spend 50% of our funding on instructional salaries. Uh, we spent 54.12% on instructional salaries uh, last year. So we're above the 50% legal requirement. And in fact, uh, in a stronger position than most other community colleges throughout the state in terms of that percentage. The second statistic I wanted to share with you is that the 311 report presents cash at the end of the year of a little over $23 million. It sounds like a lot. But please keep in mind that cash is very volatile. Uh, we get huge infusions of cash when property tax payments come in, in December and April. And then we draw down that cash. And so our minimum balance for cash for the year typically runs about $9 million. This year, of course, with the state uh, declining to provide us the last five months of payments, our low balance in cash is predicted to be below our minimum target level. At this point, uh, we've had some good results in collections lately, but we are uh, continuing to keep option the possibility that some cash borrowing may be necessary later in the year. The third statistic I wanted to share with you is our fund equity, which you all know is the reserve. The reserve is about $12.5 million. It's interesting to, to note that the reserve is assets minus liabilities. It's not the same as cash, so those two numbers will differ. The next two items are closely related. It's just a comparison of budget to actual. Revenues came in slightly below our budget, uh, about 1% below budget. That's because we had a state deficit as assessed to us mid-year. So we're a little low on revenues, but we are also a little bit low on expenses. We came in under budget by about three tenths of a percent. So both revenues and expenses were pretty close between the budget and the actual. The net result of revenues and expenses this year is that revenues exceeded expenses by $490,000. Uh, for those of you who own a business, you might refer to that as your net income. Uh, we don't call it that in government. It's not really a profit. But essentially, we generated $490,000 more than we uh, spent, than we laid out. So that extra $149,000 uh, causes a small increase in the reserve. So the reserves remain strong and maybe slightly stronger than in the prior year. One I wanted to point out because you may have seen some things in the news is lottery. Uh, we received two buckets of lottery. One is uh, perfectly discretionary. It helps support the general fund. But about a quarter of lottery must be dedicated to instructional supplies. That's allocated to the departments for their budgets. What you may have seen in some of your state news is that two assembly, one assembly bill and one Senate bill allow the college to redirect some of that lottery money to provide uh, temporary assistance for students for food, housing, expenses of education, et cetera. Uh, while we appreciate the flexibility in the legislature, we only have $321,000. 
and the departments desperately need that for their instructional supplies. They haven't seen an increase for the last two or three years. So while we aren't able to redirect any money from lottery to support temporary student assistance, we have been providing substantial support from our equity funds in housing and in food. I think VP Cooper and Dr. Esposito know I've given you reports on that as well. So if you hear that we could redirect lottery, uh, we don't believe that's prudent or necessary at this point in time. The last statistic from the report is one that I find quite dramatic. Over the last five years, the amount that we have paid for PERS and STRS contributions has increased by 72%. The dollar amount has increased by 72%. That's a $3 million increase. It's a substantial impact on a budget of a little over $50 million. And in fact, we're not done. The state has further planned increases for both PERS and STRS. So the 72% increase we've seen in the last five years is going to increase substantially more over the next three or four years. Pension costs will continue to be a substantial strain on the general fund. Those are the highlights of the report. I'm happy to take any questions. Are there questions, uh, of Mr. Diamond? Thank you for your thorough report. With that, we're gonna move on to the next item, which are announcements. Are there any announcements from the board members or the superintendent? Superintendent has an announcement. Um, I would like to share with the board and the public that we did receive the notice today regarding the regional stay at home order that will go into effect in Solano County uh, on December 17th at 11.59 p.m. Uh, the managers met earlier today to discuss the potential that this would happen. And um, we'll be working with employees to advise them on the steps we'll be taking to ensure that they can comply with the stay at home order for the period of time uh, before we are on winter break. As you know, much of the stay at home order will be held when the college is closed from December 24th through January 3rd, but it does include days December 18th, uh, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and the week of January 4th. So we will be uh, communicating with employees about steps that we'll be taking to support them to uh, comply with the order. Thank you. Any other? Uh, announcements, Dr. Chapman? Yes, um, maybe uh, Trustee Young or Dr. Esposito Noy may want to share about Karen Sims. Yes, uh, I would like to, oh, let's see, Trustee Honey Church. Go ahead. I would like, um, all, all of you know who Karen Sims is, right? She was uh, on the hiring committee when we hired, when I was a uh, further in the hiring committee that uh, brought uh, Dr. SBC Vendor on board. She was an asset on that, Karen was an asset on that committee. And in September, uh, Citizen Bond Oversight Committee, that, uh, the board uh, ad hoc committee of that, assistant of Trustee uh, Thurston, uh, Trustee Bond and myself, appointed her to be on the Citizen uh, Bond Oversight Committee representing senior citizens. Last Friday, she passed, and we had not had a chance to, she had not had a chance to attend at the end of the CBOC meetings or what have you, but she definitely would have been an asset on that uh, board. I would like to dedicate this meeting in her memory, this board meeting in her memory. So we will do that. Okay. And then let the minutes reflect that. Please. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Very bubbly person. <laughs> so, yeah, well. well, are there any other announcements? Uh, next is items from the board. Board members, did each, any of you have a item to speak on? Yes, I do. I'm okay. going to miss the nuts this year from Trustee Martin's ranch. And uh, but I understand, Trustee Martin, we you'll get around to us another another year. Uh, but I would I would like to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season. Please stay safe and mm -hmm. adhere to the to the uh, mandates that's before us as far as practicing safe distance and wearing the mask and stay in. Uh, it is really hidden close to home. I I have some close friends who uh, parents have passed and they've been impacted 
uh, affected. So just be safe. Thank you. Uh -huh. And you say another thing, I'll just make, make a comment. Sure. Read everything you see on COVID-19 because it's like every other day they got something new. It was not out there before in the literature that you need to be aware of, okay? About the disease. Right, thank you. So I think we're all frightened of this difficult yes. time. Yes. We're so, hoping that the, um, but we're, I, go ahead. we're hoping we have a new uh, thing that will help us now. I hope. Right. right. Well, a new president won't hurt. A new president will help. Sir, yeah. yeah. Well, we now, on a lighter note, we have two presidents at my house now uh, for one day. <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Judy Honeychurch is the president of the Fairfield Sassoon Unified oh. School District. Oh. Uh, until tomorrow. Oh. Uh, take a selfie when you get home. Right. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. I want to uh, thank uh, Quentin Voice for leading us through this last year, which was no easy task. You did a very good job and thank you so much for doing that. So with so thank that- Thank you very much. You, you all made it easy to been flexible, be flexible with all of these changes so rapidly. Thank you. Right, and I miss meeting you all in person, but now I'm at least on camera. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's right. You are on camera for the first time since we've that's been right. doing That's right, that's so, right. A whole year. There, there was no uh, closed session. <laughs> And uh, so we'll move on to adjournment and the new uh, spokesperson for adjournment uh, is, is going to be Amory Young. Yes, the next senior person on the board, okay? <laughs> I move that we adjourn. And we have to give uh, Trustee Honeychurch a plaque on adjournment. The king of adjournment. <laughs> king, I'm the king of delay, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, would, would Trustee Voice like to second? Sure, I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you. Please call the roll for adjournment, which I'm not sure is actually necessary, but go ahead. Yes. Uh-oh, uh -oh, not you. Ooh. Trustee Cara. <laughs> Aye. Trustee Thurston. Aye. Trustee Voice. Aye. President Honeychurch. Aye. Trustee Young. Aye. Trustee Chapman. Aye. Trustee Martin. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Okay, good night. 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 Good night.